This portion of the video is to demonstrate palpation of the abdomen. So first off, we want to do a general palpation of the abdominal wall. And we're going to want to palpate in each one of the four quadrants. If the patient has any pain or discomfort, you want to make sure that you start palpating away from where that is and use that palpate in the area where there is any symptoms last. You want to use a sort of a, a rotating motion in each one of the four quadrants. You want to start with a light palpation and then move to a more deep palpation. So again, you can use just one hand or you can put the two hands together. And again, a superficial palpation. Again, palpating to see if there's any pain or tenderness, but also do I feel any masses in that area? And then finally, a more deep palpation. The deep palpation will likely be slightly uncomfortable for the patient, but it should not be painful. Next, we want to be able to see if we can palpate both the spleen and uh, the liver edge. For the spleen, again, under normal circumstances, you won't be able to palpate the spleen. If there was any suggestion of splenic enlargement when you did percussion, this is your time to, to do for it. There are two different potential techniques for this. There's the one-handed or the two-handed technique. For the two-handed technique, you reach across the patient with your left hand and brace, have the patient relax into you and brace underneath and push from above. And again, here, I'm pushing up underneath the rib cage towards the area where the spleen should be located and ask the patient to inhale for me. And exhale. What you're doing under that moment is to see if it runs underneath your fingers, the tip of the spleen. You can also do this with a one-handed technique where you just place your hands underneath the rib cage and do the same thing. Could you take a deep breath for me? When the patient inhales, that brings the spleen down towards your fingers. And if there's enlargement, you have a higher chance of feeling it. If a patient has massive splenic enlargement, it may be lower in the abdomen. So take note of that from when you did your percussion. Next, we have palpation of the liver edge. Now, most normal patients, you can actually feel the edge of the liver since it's near the edge of the rib cage under normal circumstances. Same thing here, there are several techniques. You can come from above, excuse me, with both hands on the surface of the patient at the edge of the rib cage, pushing up underneath the edge of the rib cage and ask the patient to take a breath for you. And exhale. And as they exhale, you can feel the edge of the rib, excuse me, the edge of the liver moving underneath your fingers. It's not horrendously distinct, but it does have sort of a smooth, slightly more firm appearance. You can also use the hooking technique, and whichever one you're more comfortable with is acceptable. And so here you take both hands, hooking them underneath the rib cage, and then again asking the patient to take a deep breath. And exhale and you'll feel the edge of the liver run underneath your fingers. The same two-handed technique you use with the spleen is also acceptable, where you brace your hand underneath the patient and feel with your dominant hand or your right hand. Take a breath for me, and exhale. You don't need to use all three techniques. Use the technique that you're most comfortable with and that works for the patients based on their body habitus. So in addition to the palpation of the four quadrants, you also need to sometimes palpate some more distinct areas of the abdomen. So specifically the epigastrium, so patients who are having pain or you're concerned about issues associated with the stomach, we can palpate in the center up here. We can also palpate at the area of the umbilicus itself, as well as in the suprapubic location if you're looking for uh, tenderness or discomfort in the area of the bladder. So we also want to be able to evaluate for what's called CVA tenderness or costovertebral angle tenderness. This is an evaluation of tenderness in the areas of the kidneys. So the first thing you want to do is make sure again you're looking at the correct landmark because the normal exam will be essentially nothing. Um, so you want to make sure you're at the actual costovertebral angle. If you're not certain where that is, you can actually palpate on the patient and feel for the edge of their ribs and follow that more towards the midline where you're going to get to the spine. So the cost of retinal angle is actually quite high in the uh, back. The biggest mistake that we see students make is doing this maneuver too low and they're palpating down in this region, whereas the kidneys are up here. So this is a percussion because the kidneys are retroperitoneal and you're trying to percuss through a large amount of muscle. 
So there's two ways you can do this. You can do this directly on the patient's skin or onto your own hand. But this is with a closed fist. So I generally will just percuss directly on the skin, but you can also percuss on your hand. So you want to place your hand on the area of the costa vertebral angle and then a firm tap on that location. If you're going to do it with just your hand, it's again at the area of the costa vertebral angle and a firm tap. A positive sign would be if the patient has significant pain or tenderness associated with that percussion.